Fetch.ai leverages the power of AI to provide automation to industries such as decentralized finance, shipping, and transportation. In today's episode, I'll go over how Fetch.ai utilizes AI to maintain their blockchain, the team behind the scenes, tokenomics, and more. And hey, make sure you stick around to the end because I'll do my little final thought and some price prediction on Fetch.ai. Let's get into it. Hey guys, my name is Ross and welcome to the Crypto Masters Podcast where we help the general public master an understanding of crypto assets. And just to let you all know, I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not financial advice. And here at the Crypto Masters, we typically focus on crypto projects for the long term. You know, Fetch.ai is a very exciting project, so let's jump right into it. So Fetch.ai blockchain is an interchain protocol built on the Cosmos ecosystem that, of course uses AI and machine learning to maintain its blockchain. Individuals and businesses can create agents that can act on their behalf to do a variety of different things. These agents, also known as Autonomous Economic Agents, or AEAs, are the foundation to Fetch.ai's blockchain as they work together to share information. So, how does Fetch.ai work? Well, as I see it, Fetch.ai can be broken down into three technical aspects. The AEAs, or Autonomous Economic Agents, that I already mentioned, the Open Economic Framework, and also the Smart Ledger. So let's dive into these three and see how each individual piece works. So the AEAs, as the name suggests, are autonomous programs that work on the owner's behalf, and they really have three main objectives. So the first, share data between AEAs two, gathering data, and then based on the the data they've gathered, make decisions. If they make good decisions, they're rewarded. If they make mistakes, they're not rewarded, but they learn for the next time. And this all has AI baked into it. And of course, they can also knowledge share between AEAs to help in their respective objectives if they've gathered data that's useful for another AEA. So now you're probably asking yourself, what are the kinds of decisions that AEAs can be making for themselves? Well, let's take a look at that. The use cases for AEAs are limitless, but there's a few types of AEAs already in development, and that includes AEAs helping out with package and delivery management, traffic and parking services, and in fact, Munich is working on a smart city that involves multiple agents that handle parking and traffic management. Agents in this city, let's say, can negotiate prices for parking if there's limited spaces available. So if there's a really a hot ticket parking spot in front of the place where you work, you could pay more to get that spot and vice versa. On next, the Open Economic Framework, or OEF. The OEF is the environment in which the AEAs can operate, which allows them to communicate with one another and share needed data. Generally speaking, the OEF layer is where all the data and information that the agents need is stored, and of course it's all powered by, you guessed it, AI. AAs get their information from the OEF layer, and nodes receive FET, or FET, for their mediation of data between the agents and the OEF layer. The final aspect of Fetch.ai's blockchain is the smart ledger, which of course logs all the transactions that the agents perform. Again, with the help of AI, probably sound like a broken record at this point, Fetch can take a look at all the transactions and help improve the network from the OEF layer all the way down to how the agent operates. It should be mentioned that data relative to individuals is all anonymous and protected. So next, on to the consensus mechanism. And to be honest, this one hurt my brain to research. It was very confusing because there's a lot of old articles and it's typically because, or mainly because Fetch used to be proof of work and they used to utilize a DAG and they have all these old videos, even on their channel, that um, kind of analyze the different aspects of their proof of work mechanism and their DAG, which was really exciting. But now they're on to proof of stake. And really Fetch now uses a variation of proof of stake called slotted proof of stake. And it's similar to that of the Cosmos Tendermint. An SPOS, man, these are so many acronyms at this point. A restriction is placed on the number of nodes that can operate in the network. Block producing nodes are selected at random using a decentralized random beacon that fairly selects which node to process the next transaction. Fetch's consensus mechanism also differs from traditional proof of stake in that it uses multi-signatures, 
we could get into how this works, but I see the two main benefits of this is that it lowers storage cost and helps new nodes sync to the network quickly. I couldn't find anything stating the current number of nodes operating on Fetch's blockchain today, but according to a Binance article back in June of 2019, Fetch has between 100 and 500 nodes currently in operation. That is a terrible exact number. And I should mention some of these nodes are operated by a select few partners and the core team itself. So in comparison, Bitcoin roughly has 10,000 nodes currently in operation. So in my opinion, fetch.ai really isn't that decentralized, but again, it's proof of stake we're talking about here, and it could be a lot worse. So for example, EOS is another proof of stake blockchain, and it only has 21 nodes in operation, not very decentralized at all. So fetch's ledger is scalable by design, and comparative to other scalable blockchains, the performance can vary, but based on fetch's private studies and studies in their testnet, they were able to achieve transaction speeds of up to 30,000 transactions per second. But for really, you know, if this is a proof of stake blockchain, which it is, um, this is not so far fetched. See what I did there? So just for reference, Bitcoin can process roughly three transactions per second. Ethereum can process 30 transactions per second. And if you want to talk, bring in uh, Ethereum 2.0 in the mix, it can process, or it states it can process 100,000 transactions per second. But of course, we'll have to wait and see. And in the centralized world, Visa can process roughly 65,000 transactions per second. It is expected that fetch.ai is going to increase resources over time, so we could see transaction speeds upwards of 30,000, but we're just going to have to wait and see if they deliver on that promise. All right, on to the team. Fetch was founded in Cambridge by Toby Simpson, the COO, Hamayan Sheikh, the CEO, and James Hahn, or the CSO, which is the Chief Science Officer. Hamayan Sheikh is also the CEO and co-founder of Metalex, which is a DEX built on the Fetch.ai blockchain. He's also the former founder and CEO at It's Me, which is a technology company specializing in machine learning and AI. It actually appears to be dissolved right now. Toby Simpson is now, in fact, an advisor at Fetch, according to his LinkedIn, but he is the former CTO and COO. Toby is also the CTO at Ozosim Limited, which is a technology company specializing in AI helping businesses. Thomas Hain, according to his LinkedIn, has many current roles, which includes director at UKRI Language and Speech Technologies, visiting professor at Nagoya Institute of Technology, and head of speech and hearing research at the University of Sheffield. Together, this team wanted to help bring blockchain and AI together to help businesses people and devices alike. So onto their partnerships and projects, and Fetch has some big time partnerships, including Coinbase, Binance, Gemini, Bosch, Fesco, and West Ham United Football Club. And hey, comment down below if you've seen the commercials. Fetch has been utilized in industries such as DeFi, transportation, and art. Here are some example projects in those industries that are currently operating on the Fetch network. Metalex, which is a DEX or decentralized exchange that we previously mentioned. Mobix is a decentralized micro-mobility marketplace that incentivizes sustainable urban mobility. So basically you can earn the Mobix token for using sustainable ways of transportation, such as using your moped, bike, walking, and I gotta say, if I lived in a metro area, not out in the suburbs, I would be using this one. Botswap automatically your DeFi and DEX trading strategy using simple to use crypto tools to help you maintain everything. This currently integrates with Uniswap and PancakeSwap, but according to their website, they will soon integrate with OneInch and SushiSwap. Stay tuned for that. Bosch and Fetch also have a partnership, as I previously mentioned, and they use a really cool process called predictive maintenance. And in this way, Fetch can help identify potential failures of machinery before they happen. This is a huge partnership for Fetch and one they kind of mention a lot, and as I would too. Colearn Paint is a very interesting project and one I really don't have a full grasp on, but basically they use AI to automatically generate NFTs. Very exciting and definitely check that out in the description. So Fetch.ai has some very exciting partnerships and I really only mentioned a few, but hey, let's get into the tokenomics of the FET token next. The Fetch.ai coin is FET or F-E-T as I've mentioned earlier and it's used to trade value along with serving as a payment mechanism for all transactions. FET has no maximum supply, but currently there are 1.1 billion in circulation. According to CryptoRank.io, the FET token sale went as follows. 
20% went to the token sale, 20% to the foundation, 20% to the founders, 20% to future releases, 10% to mining, and 10% to advisors. If you're excited about Fetch.ai, where can you buy the FET token? Well, it's available on a lot of different exchanges, but just to name a few, it's available on Coinbase, Binance, Gemini, KuCoin, and Crypto.com. So one thing you might be asking yourself is, how do I create my own AEA or autonomous agent to help me trade and manage my portfolio? Well, you're gonna need some coding skills because in its current state, you can only create an agent using their Python library, which I'll link in the description if you're, you have some Python skills. That's currently what I use at my day-to-day -day work, but I didn't have time to dive into this. Um, it does look like they have a lot of great resources, including documentation and YouTube videos. According to their Twitter account, you will soon be able to create your own agent using their interface on their website. You can tell right now they kind of have two websites going on, but one is going to be for things all crypto, and the other is going to be for setting up your own agent to kind of trade for you, if you will. Almost creating a virtual twin. I unfortunately don't have a timeline on this, but I really hope it's soon because that sounds really cool. Before I get into the price prediction and my final thoughts, I just want to say if you've liked this video so far, hit that like button and subscribe and you know comment down below if you're on YouTube and let us know what you think about Fetch.ai and also let us know if there are any other crypto projects you'd like us to cover. Now, without further ado, let's get into the price prediction and my final thoughts. So on to the price prediction and what I like to do is some simplified price predictions, especially for beginners. So. Why don't you head over to the CryptoMasters.com and, and follow along with me. So if you go down over to Crypto Tools and then click Price at Market Cap, what this will allow you to do is basically compare two coins or two projects together. So on the first drop down, I'm going to select Fetch or search for it and select it. And then I'll select Graph, which is another, if I spell it right, it's another project that kind of specializes in data. And let's hit calculate here. So if, in other words, what I'm saying is if Fetch ever gets to the success of Graph in market cap, uh, you could see a 10x growth from there. And obviously this isn't going to be an apples to apples comparison if you're comparing projects because you know they have different partnerships, they have different objectives, but this is a very high level if fetch.ai were to be as successful as Graph, it could have a 10x growth, roughly speaking. And really, if you're investing now, we're kind of in a bear market, um, you could see, I would say a 20x growth. So um, Let's see, what would a 20x growth for Fetch be? Well, I'll go over to Crypto Tools and Crypto Prices, where we have all crypto prices and various information. I'll go ahead and search for Fetch. Let's see, we set a 20x growth, so that'd put it at maybe $6 eventually. Nope, that's not right, $4. Yeah, there you go, roughly $4, let's say, next bull run. So that's my rough price prediction. And I will say this, I feel like, uh, projects specializing in data and um, really artificial intelligence for some reason haven't followed the trend of Bitcoin. Um, so what we could also do is go over to crypto tools and look at hindsight tool. So let's just pick um, Bitcoin. Obviously it's, it's at the top. I could have picked it there. And let's just pick around 2019. This is when Fetch launched. And let's just say we put in $1,000. So Bitcoin would have given us a return or a total profit of about $7,000 um, and your new amount would be about $8,000. So around the same timeline, let's see what Fetch would have given us. So Fetch, if we invested $1,000 back in 2019, oh, we would be down 550. Uh, let's compare that to another data project, um, kind of use, utilizing data as well. Uh, let's see, 1000 um, okay, that one's a lot better than I thought. Um, Ocean, so if you invest in Ocean Protocol, that also is kind of a, a project utilizing data, you could see a $4,600 profit. And let's see Graph. Let's click on Graph if you invest 1000 So yeah, another a project, you know, if you invested $1,000 back in January of 2019, um, you'd only have $177. So comparative to Bitcoin, traditionally these projects aren't that great, but... Um, I think these are one of those projects that you're really getting in on the ground floor and it's going to take a while to really spin up and be as successful. Um, but yeah, that's my rough price prediction. So on to my final thoughts of Fetch. 
and I really kind of break it down into a few pros and cons. And as I see it, Fetch has a great team. That's a big pro for Fetch. They have, at least on the surface, you know, uh, you can only read so much about a team to really know what's going on in-house. But on the surface, it looks like a great team. Um, they've got cutting-edge technology. I mean, blockchain and machine learning, uh, AI, these are big buzzwords in the industry. I mean, that's going to get anyone excited, even if you don't fully understand it, which I'm not going to act like I fully do. Um, and yeah, they've got great partnerships. I mean, that West Ham United really puts the Fetch name out there, and that gets people excited as well. And again, you could see this as a con or a pro, but I think uh, big data and crypto is really in the early stages. You know, it's really going to take um, you know big businesses. I see really driving the price up from this, at least from a functional standpoint. You know, West Ham United. Uh, using Fetch.ai's blockchain to really do some analysis, um, player analysis, let's say. Uh, Munich, the city, utilizing Fetch.ai to build a smart city. So hopefully those wheels keep it churning, but you could see this as a pro or a con. Another con for Fetch, you could say, is stiff competition, uh, especially you know in blockchain as a whole, but really in the sector of big data and blockchain. Um, we looked at Ocean and The Graph. They're two big projects, uh, really solid projects. Um, you can check out the Ocean video. I'll link it up here um, if you want to check out what Ocean Protocol is. We haven't done the graph yet, but these are still very exciting projects and very good projects that Fetch has to compete with. But um, to be honest, that's not always a con. That could you know, just drive up um, competition or uh, I guess I should say um, goodness of the project that Fetch could be. Another con, as I see it, is just the price action of big data projects uh, in the crypto space. As I was just mentioning uh, a little bit ago with the hindsight tool and the uh, price at market cap tools, um, just a little bit that the price of big data projects uh, doesn't typically follow Bitcoin, uh, which I see kind of as a negative. But, um, you know, that's totally up to you. We could be getting on the ground floor of something epic and amazing here. So on to the last con of Fetch, and I see this as the biggest one, they really have to get their app uh, up and running maybe yesterday because they they did release a promotional video, maybe I'll put it up here, uh, about your digital twin that you can uh, uh, program and configure to uh, trade for you. And, you know, if that's going to be a major selling point, they need to get that app up and running ASAP. I mean, I want to get my hands dirty and get in there and just click around and set up some auto trades or something like that just for fun, really. And I really don't want to have to bust out Python or have any coding knowledge to do so. And also, just as another final thought, I feel like this is yet another pro of the Cosmos blockchain. And it really just shows off the power of the Cosmos and its interoperability and really the power of it and why many projects are are choosing to build on top of Cosmos and how um, awesome that project is. Also, if you don't know much about Cosmos, check out our episode done a, a while ago, but check it out here if you're interested. Well guys, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe below, do all that fun stuff. Hey, comment if you liked Fetch and comment if you have a, another crypto project you'd like us to cover. And as always, make sure to check out thecryptomasters.com your one-stop crypto shop. Thanks, everybody.